Does the Bible have different levels of meaning? That is, after we have seen the so-called surface meaning or literal meaning, are there other deeper levels to spiritual meaning? This chapter is going to explore these questions and elements. Did you notice in the reading of the illustration of the Bible study, pages 203 to 205, that there was quite a bit of difference in the interpretations in the conversation among these young people? Sometimes people talk about this dichotomy between literal and spiritual meaning. Literal interpretation is often used to affirm the historicity of the Bible, especially with topics like miracles. Duval and Hayes think that literal is a little too fuzzy. So, they prefer the term literary meaning. So in trying to establish this dichotomy between literal and spiritual, our authors prefer using the word literary meaning. This reflects the type of literature that is being used, its context, its historical background, the grammar, the meaning of words, and basically all that we've been studying so far. Literary meaning does not preempt or replace spiritual meaning, but because the Bible is basically about God and his relationship with us, the, liter the literary meaning will be a spiritual meaning as well. The dichotomy between literal and spiritual meanings <clears throat> dates back really to the early centuries of Christianity. Some of the early Christian scholars developed a system to interpret Scripture, and they acknowledged the literal meaning, but encouraged the interpreter to find the spiritual meaning. The early interpreters of the Bible sought to have their readers find the literal meaning, the allegorical meaning, the moral meaning, and the anagogical meaning of the text. This was very popular in the fourth century and it even came back in around the reformers. If you'll look early in this course there is a chart that lays out the different interpretive methods by uh, historical time period in Christianity. We gave you that the first or second week of this course. So what is allegory exactly? <clears throat> allegory is a story that uses an extensive amount of symbolism. Gridenus defines it as an extended metaphor. That is, a number of elements in a story that make up a string of metaphors which then have deeper unified meaning. The Bible does use allegory occasionally. For example, in Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, this could qualify as an allegory. So read this text and note the extended use of metaphor over the next several slides. So you can see how Isaiah uses allegory in this passage. Allegory is not a bad thing in and of itself. It is another literary device that is used occasionally in the Bible to convey a message in a colorful way. However, allegorical interpretation as, a, as an interpretive method is quite different from an allegory. And this can mislead us completely if we use it to interpret a non-allegorical text. Very few texts in the Bible are allegorical. And you need to understand the difference 
and distinguish these two. So we see that allegory as a literary device is quite different from allegorical interpretation. In other words, an interpreter who uses allegory on all of the scripture is using allegory as, a, as an interpretive system, and that will get you into trouble with interpretation. There's a difference between that and a, an instance of where a biblical writer uses allegory. So you see the difference. For example, look at Exodus 27 and 19. Let's focus in on the aspect of tent pegs here, for example, and we'll, we'll illustrate this. An interpreter who uses the allegorical interpretation as a method might say something like this. The tent pegs in this story in Exodus represent Jesus and his strength to hold us up. That's not what the author was saying in Exodus, is it? Or, tent pegs represent the spikes driven into Jesus' wrists at the crucifixion. That's a whole different matter if you use allegorical methodology to interpret that passage. Allegorical interpreters are looking for deeper spiritual meaning without asking what the symbol might have meant to the original biblical audience. So what can we conclude from all of these examples that you find in your textbook? Well, as you seek to determine the meaning of a biblical passage, avoid the temptation to allegorize. Don't try to read Christ back into every rock and tent peg in the Old Testament because you will miss the actual meaning that God is trying to convey. Use instead the interpretive journey in the five steps that we are teaching you. This will keep you on the right track. All right, let's take a look at another form of interpretation that can lead you off the track. Typology is a foreshadowing from something in the Old Testament that points forward to its fulfillment in Christ. For example, you could say that the entire sacrificial system of Israel in the Old Testament foreshadows the sacrifice of Christ. The book of Hebrews tells us that Christ is the ultimate sacrifice, eliminating forever the need of any other of the sacrifices. Another name for foreshadowing is the term typology. A type can be defined as a biblical event, person, or institution which serves as an example or a pattern for other events, persons, or institution. Indeed, the Old Testament flows into the New Testament as part of a continuous salvation history story. What is promised in the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New. So typology is part of the promise fulfillment scheme that connects the two testaments together. An example of typology would be Psalm 22 in the Old Testament. David wrote Psalm 22 thousand years before the coming of Christ. But note the close correspondence between the selected verses in this psalm and the suffering of Christ on the cross, especially this verse, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? Now the danger of typology would be when someone begins to 
take every little detail in the Old Testament and somehow say, well, this is a type or a foreshadowing of Christ. In that sense, it is being overused and it would lead to some erroneous interpretations of the Old Testament. Now, the clear parameter to keep you from going astray with typology is if you read something in the Old Testament that is confirmed by the New Testament as typological, then you are safe in that interpretation. Okay? Therefore, while other Old Testament texts may bear some similarity to New Testament realities, they cannot be confidently classified as typology unless the New Testament indicates this fulfillment. Another type of improper interpretation <clears throat> when, in, when folks are looking for a spiritual and a deeper meaning in the text, it can be found in what's called Bible codes. This was a system Michael Drosnan devised in his book, uh, the Bible Code, and what it claimed is that there was a special letter sequence of code hidden in the Hebrew text of the Old Testament that now with computers it could be unlocked. The idea of Bible Codes had been around for a long time. Uh, the older code of Jewish mysticism is called Gematria, while the modern one of Drosnan and others is called ELS, or Equidistant Letter Sequencing. Gematria is where Biblical Hebrew uses normal letters of the alphabet, not only to represent the, the sounds of words in English, but also to represent numbers. You can read in your textbook the elaborate scheme that has been used to come up with, with numbers for different words in the Hebrew text. You can also read in your textbook how ELS works, and it's quite an elaborate system that absolutely requires a computer to, to generate the information in this system of exegesis I think you'll see very quickly that you can come up with quite some elaborate interpretations of the text. Uh, you'll want to read that for yourself there. But again, our recommendation is that you stay to the simple five-step interpretive journey that we're promoting in this course. Well, as you see, these uh, elaborate systems of counting, gematria or ELS, can lead to different interpretations and on a whole host of complications. But the original question of this chapter is, does the Bible have different levels of meaning? We do not believe it does. There is one level of meaning the one that is tied to the historical, cultural, and literary contexts that you will find and discover by using the interpretive journey, the five steps in this journey that we are teaching you in this textbook.